Hi folks, welcome back. This is uh, the first part of a three-part series on research. Uh, the first part will be uh, finding resources, the second one will be about evaluating those resources, and the third one will be about integrating the sources into your research. All right, so first question we need to ask is, what types, uh, or when do you know that you need research? When do you need to bring in some quotations and citations and things like that? And it really comes down to your claims and knowing what a claim is and how to support that claim. So the claim is just some statement in your paper that requires some sort of evidence to back it up. So it's not going to be a commonsensical statement like the sky is blue. Nobody's going to disagree with you on that, so you don't need to have evidence for it. On the other hand, if you make a claim like this, I look at number one here, allowing prayer in schools improves the students' grades. Uh, you know, that might be true, it might not be true. Uh, most readers, especially your educated academic readers, will immediately want to know what evidence do you have to back up that claim? Same thing with the second one. Gluten-free diets have been shown to boost your immune system and prevent cancer. Now you see a lot of claims like this in advertisements, in uh, marketing, and more often than not, they won't actually bother uh, decide any evidence for these claims. You're just supposed to take it uh, at their word. Um, but your, again, your academic readers will immediately want to know, have you done any studies on this? Do you have uh, references to uh, lab results? Uh, do you have any evidence at all to back up this claim? Uh, thirdly, uh, look at the third example. Earning a college degree is a sound financial investment. Again, you know, a lot of people would agree with this. We're not saying it's an outrageous claim, but uh, then again, a lot of uh, academics and educated readers will want to know what kind of evidence do you have to back up that claim? How do we know it's true? Or at least probable. Now we'll get a lot more into this in the second lecture, but for now I want you to think about research in terms of it being peer-reviewed, relevant to the topic, accurate, as correct as possible, and recent, up-to-date stuff. Now, you'll get a lot of your research from the library. If you take other kinds of classes, uh, physics, for example, biology, psychology, you might actually get out into the field and do some research or uh, do some actual labs. Uh, but more often than not, in an English class, uh, most of your research will be done at the library. Now, there are four things you should know about in the library. The first is reference librarians. Uh, these are professionals whose job it is to help you do your research. Now, they won't do the research for you, but if you go to them with questions about your topic, you can ask them things like, what's a peer-reviewed source? Or uh, what's a good database for me to use to uh, look for research on a paper about cancer? They will have some answers for you. Uh, so always think about these uh, reference librarians there. There's a desk on the library. Uh, they're, you know, you're welcome to go there at any time. There's also an Ask a Librarian tool where you can do a lot of this online. Okay, so they're there. And they're there to direct you to the books in the library, the journals. Uh, the journals are the uh, publications. They're not magazines. Uh, they are uh, publications that have articles in them written by professors and scholars, professional researchers, and those are the peer-reviewed sources I'm talking about. Uh, lastly, there are these online databases, and these are very uh, powerful databases, and I'll show you how to use those in the second part of this lecture, but they can be overwhelming at first, so it's a good idea, I think, to not just jump into these databases right away. I go to the library, talk to a reference librarian, or at least use the Ask Librarian tool to kind of get a heads up before you go rushing in there. You get <laughs> information overload really quick. Okay, so four questions about sources to ask. One, what kind of sources do you need? If it's a uh, essay about Shakespeare, you probably need uh, sources from other uh, literature scholars. If it's a persuasive argument about a uh, smoking ban, uh, you might want to uh, look at uh, health journals. Uh, look, at, look into that. Maybe uh, you could look into some government uh, publications where maybe they've dealt with these uh, sorts of bans before. It just depends on what kind of argument you want to make. Uh, two, how many sources do you need? It's always a good idea to ask your professors. They usually will tell you in the assignments, uh, but sometimes they will leave it up to you. So you might ask, uh, how many sources would you like to see in this paper? Or, uh, you know, how many sources uh, do you consider to be sufficient uh, for this paper? You know, something along those lines. Uh, three, how much time do you have to do the research? 
If you get started early on your research projects, you'll have a, a lot of time uh, to do the interlibrary loan uh, that I'll talk to you about in a minute. Or if you need to order materials, you'll have time to come in. If, on the other hand, you wait until the very last minute to get started, then you'll be limited to strictly uh, what you can get your hands on physically in the library or the full text stuff that's in the database. That's a very small fraction of what you can get. So it's a good idea to always start early. And then the last question, how do you know that those sources you found are actually the best sources to use for that essay? That's a really big question, and again, we'll get into some of these in the next lecture. Okay, the three kinds of library sources I want to talk about and show you how to find. Uh, one is the journal articles. These are the par excellence uh, sources. Uh, there's nothing that trumps a recent, up-to-date, accurate, uh, peer-reviewed journal article from a reputable journal. Uh, second to that are books. Uh, books are really good if you just need to get a general, some general information about the topic, or if it's a, if you're okay with using older uh, information, uh, books can be great. Uh, and then thirdly, magazines, newspapers, and encyclopedias. Now these will not typically be acceptable in a college level essay. It's okay to read them and learn about the topic for yourself, but when it comes time to provide evidence for your claims, no professor will be happy uh, to see things like Encyclopedia Britannica, or Wikipedia, or a newspaper article, or Time magazine. You know, that, that's high school level research. So we need to up the ante into college level research. And that means journal articles and scholarly books. Now before I actually get into the databases with you, I want to give you some uh, sort of an overview of the tools available there. Uh, the most basic and important is this uh, Boolean search. So when you do a search in the library, uh, you'll be typing in more than likely keywords. And you can type in just one keyword, but it's generally better if you have multiple keywords. So Shakespeare and Caesar will give you one set of results. Basically every article in that database uh, that has Shakespeare and Caesar in it somewhere. Or Shakespeare or Caesar will give you a bigger set. So that's going to give you everything with the Shakespeare and everything with Caesar. So you'll get a huge, huge uh, uh, set of results. You could do Shakespeare, not Caesar. And that will uh, give you everything about Shakespeare but the stuff that mentions Caesar. Now there's uh, two other tools. There's the uh, truncation tool. And that's usually the asterisk or the question mark. So if you have a word like symbol, uh, you could type symbol, asterisk, and that's going to give you everything that's every word that starts off with symbol. So symbolism, uh, symbolic, and so on. So those, it's very useful to have those. Now, when you do these searches, uh, it's good to try to, I like to start uh, narrow, narrowly. So think exactly what your topic is about. And lots of keywords and phrases that might show up in an article that would be relevant to you. Now, the problem with that is you will probably get a very short list but that's okay starting off. Um, it's, it's great to find the most relevant stuff first. If you don't find anything, uh, then you just uh, eliminate some keywords or uh, try some synonyms, some different phrasings until you can get a, a decent list of results. So for example, if I typed in smoking ban at St. Cloud State University, I'll probably get a very short list, maybe nothing. If I try smoking bans on college campuses, that will probably give me a little bit bigger of a list. If I just say smoking bans, that's going to be really big. If I just say smoking, though, I'll get a huge, you know, tens of thousands of uh, results, and that won't be very useful. So start narrow, and then work your way uh, broader and broader. Okay, another really great way to find sources is to check the references. So if you find a really good source, they will have a work cited or a bibliography as part of that article. And you are free to use their research. So if you need to find a couple other sources, take a look at their references page and uh, look for those articles. And you know, when you find those articles, they will have their own set of references, their own bibliographies. So pretty soon you'll have uh, hundreds and hundreds of possible articles. So uh, really, if you, can only, if you only find one really good up-to-date source, you'll already have a lot of the research done for you. Now another trick is to look for uh, these frequently cited articles or books on the topic, and I'll show you when we look at the database how to do that. Okay, so some final thoughts. Uh, if you talk to the reference librarians, they will say if it takes you more than about five minutes to find something, use the Ask a Librarian tool. And then also keep in mind that the librarians are there to help you do the research, teach you how to do research, not do the research for you. So don't go there to the reference desk and say, I need five sources, please find them for me. 
they're not going to do that. If you say, however, I, I need five sources, can you please help me use the database to find some peer-reviewed sources, they'll be more than happy to help. So anyway, uh, let's turn now to the uh, databases and, and take a look at this process. Okay, so I'll be showing you now how to use the library to find good sources for your papers. Now, by default, uh, the first thing you see when you go to the library homepage is the uh, books, music, and more search field. So that's fine. It's a great place to start, see if you can find a good book. So I'm going to imagine for this video that I'm looking for sources to write about, a, about an essay on the topic of smoking on campus, the, the smoking ban. So here I can start by looking for a book, look for smoking policy, books, find, and there we go. There's a book there called Smoking, Risk, Perception, and Policy. One called No Smoking, uh, The Ethical Issues. You can see uh, there's, these are printed books, nonfiction. <laughs> That's kind of important. You probably don't want a fictional book if you're writing an argumentative essay. Let's just go ahead and click on that. And there's the category. So you notice it says uh, Smoking Health Aspects there, uh, Nicotine Health Aspects. I can look at some of these other options. There's one called Smoking Government Policy, Health Policy. So if I click on one of these subjects, it'll bring me to a list. You know, this, these are all books that have something to do with health policy. You know, probably not very useful uh, for my paper. Now, when I want to find this book in the library, all I have to do is look here at the call number. And if uh, you go to the library, you'll be able to, to find this by looking on the walls. There are these signs. You can also ask uh, the librarians to help you if you get lost. Now, over here is something cool, the similar items. So, you know, if you need to find three sources, well, there is one. Uh, maybe this book could be two and this book could be three, so <laughs> you'd be done. Uh, so quite handy, quite useful. Now, something else cool, when it comes time to cite the, uh, this book, if I click here on Cite This, it's going to show me the APA MLA citation. So all, all I would have to do is just copy that, and paste it into my Word document, and I'd be good to go. This is also helpful if you get home or you're writing the paper and you don't have the book handy. Just remember, if you can get to this uh, database, you can get the citation information. It's really handy. Okay, so books are easy. Let's see about the uh, journal articles, though. Remember, the journal articles are better than books uh, for most, most cases. So I don't even want to do anything here yet. I'm just going to go straight to Advanced Search. Save some time this way. Now, by default, we're going to be using the Academic Search Premier. It's a very powerful database. It's usually more than enough uh, for most purposes. So again, I'll just start up here by typing in smoking. And uh, it gives me some suggestions there, but let's just keep it at smoking. And then we'll try and policy. Let's see what happens there. When I search for both those terms, it's given me 6,000 results, so we might as well, why don't we go ahead and do that college option there. Okay, so I'm still, I got 700 results that time. Now, one thing you can do to narrow this search uh, more is to click over here on some of these options. So this is a very important option here. Scholarly and peer-reviewed journals. So if I click this, well, I don't even have to worry anymore about, is it peer-reviewed, is it not peer-reviewed? It's going to be peer-reviewed if you check that box. So it's a good idea to check it. Uh, down here, we, you might not really want an article from 1986. That's pretty dated. So you might just say, start at 2000. Let's go ahead and update this. We still have uh, 700 results, even with all those options. So, more than enough. Now, look at the first article here. It's called Canadian Campus Smoking Policies Investigating the Gap Between Intent and Outcome from a Student Perspective. So, that actually sounds very relevant. Even though it is a Canadian campus, it's in the uh, Journal of American College Health. So, <laughs> not sure uh, what's going on there, but we can open it up. And there we go. There's our... Information, Journal of American College Health. It's got three authors. You can see how they've classified it. So if I needed to, I could click on some of those subjects and find more information. Now, when I click on the PDF 
full text, it will just bring up the article and I can read it. And it's always a good idea, use the PDF full text whenever possible, because the uh, advantage to this is it will have the page numbers. So it's pretty much the exact same thing you would get if you had the printed copy of the journal, but it's been scanned in and it has page numbers. So you don't have that problem when you do your citations of not knowing what page it was on. So always uh, click that. Now, if, if uh, I was still having trouble, I'm not having trouble, <laughs> I found 700 articles, but uh, let's just say this was the only article I was able to find on this. Well, if I click on Cited References, I'll be able to see what this person cited in the article, and then I can find these articles. So here's one called A Review of Undergraduate University Tobacco Control Policies, blah, blah, blah. So maybe I want to use that. So I could click on this Find It button, and then it will show me if it's in the database or where to go to get it. Okay, so one last thing I'll show you here with the uh, library. Uh, let's see if there's a good way to get back uh, all the way back to the library page as uh, the interlibrary loan. So sometimes you find a great source in one of those databases or you see a great book on Amazon, let's say, but they don't have it in the library. Well, that's what this is for, interlibrary loan. It doesn't cost anything for you to use this. Uh, if I want to request a book that's not in the library, I click there. If I do the article, it's here. It says uh, 2 to 10 days. Usually they'll get it to you sooner than that. Usually if it's an article, they'll get it to you uh, within a day, but I guess it depends on you know who's working and uh, how hard is how rare is it. You will need your uh, St. Cloud ID, but it's very easy to use. Okay, and then lastly, if you're looking for articles, you can't find them, you've watched this lecture, you're still not getting it, uh, or if you're doing anything in the library for more than five minutes and you need help, uh, that's what this Ask a Librarian tool is for. So you can go there in person, tells you where they are. Uh, they also have a phone number that's uh, local, and they also have a toll-free one. Then they have email. And I see these, uh, these folks uh, sitting there at their desk a lot, and nobody's even there asking them anything. So what a shame. Uh, you shouldn't you know, stress out if you can't find sources. You're not alone with your research. You have all these great research uh, librarians, reference librarians that are really eager to help. They're all really great. Now, you can't just go up there and say, I'm feeling lazy today. Please do my research. Okay, they're not going to do that. But if you say, here's my topic. Professor says I need to find three peer-reviewed sources on it. Uh, can you show me what to do or uh, help me out with this database? You know, they'll be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, so anyway, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to show you. If you have uh, additional questions, though, ask them on Canvas or on YouTube.